Hi, I'm Bishop Larry Kulik, and I invite you today into my home. I'm here at the kitchen at the Bishop's residence, and I would like to share with you one of my favorite Easter customs. It's one of the Easter foods that I create and place in the Easter basket for blessing on Holy Saturday. Basically, Easter cheese is very simple. It doesn't take long to make at all, and it's used by people throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, not only do Slovaks have Easter cheese, but many Polish people do and Ukrainians. And in Slovak, if you're from the West, we used to call Easter cheese Sidek. But if you're from Eastern Slovakia, you might also refer to it as Rutka. But whether it's Sidek or Rutka, it's a great part of the Easter meal. And I'm going to show you uh, a way of making this traditional dish in a little bit of a contemporary twist. For our recipe today, we need six eggs, two cups of whole milk, a cup of cream, a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a half a cup of raisins. And then for the ornamentation of the Siddiq afterwards, some whole cloves. Now if you notice, these are Lenten eggs, and then see what happens to them after Easter. We want to make sure we break the right eggs today. But just simply break six eggs like you normally would. Okay, so I've broken the six eggs up and I'm going to just whisk these eggs a little bit. I've learned over the years that it helps to break the eggs up first in this process. And so, sort of like as if you're almost making scrambled eggs at home, it's the same process. Just whip your eggs up so that you break the yolks and get a nice consistency. Okay, I've whipped the eggs up I think rather nicely, if I say so myself. And we add two cups of whole milk. Now, this is the Bishop Kulik secret recipe. This is American kicked up Siddiq. I add some good one cup of cream. That's a secret recipe. It just kicks it up a notch. So with my two cups of milk and one cup of cream mixed into the already beaded eggs, I'm going to continue to whip this up Although with the bowl that I've used, uh, <laughs> you want to be careful that you don't over whip it uh, so that it doesn't spill all over your table. All right, once we've finished whipping up very well our eggs, our milk, and our cream, what we want to do, and this is very important, I've come to learn this because I always say that I, I tend to cut back on salt and not put it in, but salt is a very important ingredient into this Easter cheese because everything is so fresh everything is so natural, you need some salt because without the salt, you're not gonna get the great taste. So I put one teaspoon of salt in. In addition, I like to add one teaspoon of sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness. In some regions of uh, Europe, the Easter cheese is done just like this and that's all there is. And in other regions, they will actually add raisins, again, to enhance the Easter cheese. What I have done, American style, is I have used golden raisins. So I add about a half a cup, or to whatever your liking might be, into the Easter cheese. I'm gonna add the last ingredient, which is very important, a teaspoon of vanilla. And then again, stir everything up very nicely. Whenever people make this Easter cheese traditionally, a lot of people have used what you might refer to as a double boiler. And it starts to begin to have a consistency very similar to scrambled eggs. But I have learned American style, there's of course a quicker, faster, and I found it just as good way to do this. And that's using the microwave. What we do is, we will cook the Siddiq in the microwave for approximately, and it's gonna depend on the consistency and I'll show you what, but probably not more than about eight minutes. And then what I begin to do is every two minutes, and sometimes as it gets closer to being finished every minute, I will stir the contents of the bowl. And then we're going to just stir, and you can start to see that the viscosity of the eggs is getting thicker, which is a great sign and you wanna keep stirring, especially if you've added the raisins because you don't want the raisins to stick at the bottom or on the side and just keep going back and forth. I originally set the microwave at nine minutes 
and we're coming close to the end of the nine minutes and we're gonna need to go a little bit longer. But I'm gonna stop and stir again. We've completed nine minutes. Oh, and it's, re oh, it's, it's getting really close. And you can see that it's just coming to a very, very good consistency. And see how I've, by stirring, how I've raised the, the, the raisins up into the acidic. That'll also not only mix the raisins through nicely, but for aesthetic purposes, when you're preparing the cheese, it'll give it a nice balanced mix for appearance sake as well. Because remember, all of these items, this being one of them, is something you wanna put in your Easter basket. And you want your Easter basket to look nice too. We're gonna bring the Easter cheese out. And I just wanna show you what it's looking like here. Do you see how you've still got some, some juice left in here? This is very important for me because what I find is keeping this a little liquidy, and you're gonna find some people like it a little more congealed. I tend to like it a little more liquidy because in our next process, you're gonna see how I think that helps to form the cheese. In preparing the Easter cheese, one of the important things is you need to get some cheesecloth. You can find this cheesecloth everywhere. Um, any of your grocery stores have it, your retail stores. What I do is I take another Pyrex bowl, equal about to the size of what I cooked the acidic in. I, for measuring purposes, I take the cheesecloth, put it over the bowl, and I try to cut so that I have excess. It's better to have more cheesecloth than not enough, believe me, as we go through this process. So what I've done is I have about a third of the cheesecloth over the bowl, a third at this side and a third at that end. And then some people like to keep their cheesecloth um, thicker. Um, I tend to keep mine thin and so I'm going to open it up and you're going to see what we're going to do. This is the critical moment here, the critical moment. I put the cheesecloth down into the bowl so that you have nice opportunity and you want to be very careful because this is hot. So this is the disclaimer, you know, it's very hot. And simply start to pour the contents into the cheesecloth. I'm so proud of this. Do you see how nice the raisins, because of that constant stirring, are mixed all throughout the acidic. We have a nice mixture of the raisins. And that's, that's great, not only for taste, so that as you're later on slicing this into pieces, each slice will have at least a couple of raisins, but it also look how proportionally nice it is for aesthetic purposes. So what we do is I just bring this up, each of your corners, sort of pull them up nicely, okay? And we wanna just lift this up, and as we're lifting it up, we wanna bring the ends of the cheese cloth together. Now, I just wanna warn you, remember, this is a hot item, and it's come out of the, of the microwave. There's always a delicate balance. You don't want to burn your hands, but also you need some of that heat to help you as you're in this process of making the cheese. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling up the cheesecloth equally, somewhat equally, and I'm slowly starting to just spin the cheesecloth. And it is hot. What you want to do is turn. And as you're noticing, see the liquid, the excess liquid is dripping off. But what that's doing is it's nicely forming the contents inside. I take a twist tie. And if you notice, I take that twist tie, I keep the, the cloth very tight, and then I put the twist tie around that so that the form stays in place. Now, what I do is I then unfurl this excess cheesecloth because it has an important purpose. It's going to become the means of helping us hang the cheesecloth. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna wanna let your cheese drip a little bit. I've learned this, I've taken a pot that has two side handles and I just simply tie the cheesecloth excess. That's why it's important, remember when we were cutting the cheesecloth, to have excess. And I just tie it over here and leave it so that it's above, it's high enough above the pot. You wanna make sure it's tight. It's not gonna drip for a long period of time, but let it drip, I would say for a good half hour or until you notice that the dripping has, has ceased. Then what you wanna do, we have to remember there's milk and eggs in this. 
So we want to make sure that then it is refrigerated appropriately. All right, and through the wonderful magic of television. Now, remember what we said, everything in our Easter basket should not only taste good, but it should look good. And really it's a form of, of respecting uh, and acknowledging uh, the resurrection of Jesus. So we want things to have great dignity. So one of the wonderful things that we do to finish up the Siddiq, and this is for ornamental purposes more than for any taste, but this is a great opportunity, especially if you have younger children or grandchildren, and you want to pass this tradition on, this is a great job for them to do. And what I do is I have just some whole cloves here. And what we're going to do, what we've always done, is you can put images on the Siddiq, any Easter image you would want. Normally what we do is we put the, put the sign of the cross. So what I'm going to do is just very carefully take the cloves and put them into the Easter cheese. They'll go in very, very easily because they're so it's soft and it just goes in. And then for preparation, when you'd like to go to eat it, you can take the cloves out. You want to do that because we don't want any dental emergencies when you're biting into a clove, on, especially on Easter. So we have the symbol of the cross placed on the Siddiq, which is a beautiful symbol of Easter and of the resurrection of Jesus. When you're going to take your Siddiq to church, I would recommend that you can put it in a nice plate or, or a small bowl. I'd wrap some saran wrap over it. And then of course, when you come home again, remember to keep it refrigerated. When it's time to serve your Siddiq, what we simply do is I just simply cut it and it'll cut very easy right down into wonderful little small pieces. The Siddiq that I made ahead of time doesn't have raisins. So for my Easter basket, I'll have both Siddiq with raisins, which we made today, and the Siddiq without raisins. Whatever customs or traditions you may follow in your family, in whatever way, please enjoy celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And may Christ bless you and bless all of those you love.